new stream over here. Hmm. Hi, it's Everett, Everett's Watercolors. Welcome to my studio. And uh, today is Everett's Watercolors. I'm going to do a demonstration painting today. I'm broadcasting live on, uh, well, somewhere, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Twitch, and I'll be doing, putting it on later on to uh, Instagram. Uh, I'm in my, in my studio with my wife, Gloria, tonight. Hello. And uh, broadcasting live, I had a little problem here on one of the stations, but uh, anyway, if it uh, doesn't get out there, I will rebroadcast it out, or I'll send out a, a uh, announcement after after the program, and make sure you get a copy of this. Uh, today, uh, thinking about what I'm about to start here, uh, I'm going to do a I'm going to do a painting of uh, some flowers. I haven't done flowers in a while, and I, I got back into the mood of uh, painting flowers with lots of color. So uh, let me go over to my painting table. Let me show you some of my, let me show you my setup here. I'm going to OLED camera. Okay. Uh, this is a photograph I took uh, on the internet. Just shows uh, flowers in a vase and so forth. Uh, beautiful, beautiful arrangement there of flowers. But I'm going to make some changes. Uh, number one, I want to put some more color in there. And I want to change, change some of the mode here or some of the, some of the, some of the configuration. But I want to start with some inspiration. So that was what I started with. So I'm going to go, I went ahead and I did some drawings. Uh, these are configuration studies that I did. I took uh, flowers and vase, but I moved around uh, some configuration ideas. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of leaning toward this area up here. I like, I like to have a cow spread out, a little more, a little more uh, variety of colors in there and so forth. Okay. So, Okay, so I took that idea and I went ahead and I, I drew up my design plan here on my watercolor paper. This is Gemini 
140 pound watercolor paper. It measures 11 inches wide and 15 inches long high. So it's a quarter sheet of uh, Gemini 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. And uh, there's my design drawing on there that I have. And uh, what I do, I got a, I've got a, uh, I got a uh, flowers in a vase, which is what I want to do, which is inspiration there. But I put I put some other items there. Here's a here's a little coffee cup, tea cup, and I put a little. Uh, this is a little pepper down here, and a little another a little bowl or pitcher or something on this side, just to give it some variety of shapes and so forth. Uh, and I put it on a flat table here in the foreground. So we're gonna have a little bit of fun today. I'm gonna show you how, a couple of things I want to describe. Uh, how, I, how I'm going to get there. First of all, let's go to my palette. Uh, the colors I'm going to use, the colors I'm going to use is uh, the cool colors because I'm going to mix some greens. And let me look up, here's my palette layout. Uh, I've got uh, perma yellow lemon, and I've got uh, yellow deep, yellow ochre down here at the bottom, and then I've got uh, yellow orange and uh, pyro red in the palette. And I got them laid out here. Now, up here on my uh, on my cool side, I got uh, cerulean blue and I've got uh, ultramarine blue and I got a little bit of uh, uh, quinacridone violet. Now, what I did here, I'm going to be using these in the colors of the flowers up here. But then I'll, I'll, for the leaves, for the greens, I'm going to mix I'm going to mix my greens. I'm going to use the cerulean blue with the le yellow lemon or with the Yellow deep. That gives me a couple of varieties of green, and then I got also ultramarine blue mixed in with uh, uh, this is a permanent yellow lemon. That'll give me another green, and I can I can add more blue to that to make it darker, or, or less blue to make it lighter. So that that's kind of the plan there. And over here, I've done a little bit of uh, took uh, I took ultramarine blue and mixed it with a little bit of pyro red to give me a darker, a much darker violet. And I got here's quinacridone violet by itself. But I can add blue to it, giving a much brighter, much darker uh, color of violet. Okay, one of the things I want to go over is some of the brush strokes I'm going to be using, and uh, I've done some really some some uh, practice on this, and I think it might make some idea uh, some sense to you. Uh, let me uh, here's my brush strokes, but I'm going to show you some things that I've done here uh, just just to get us started as a warm up. And it'll get me warmed up to, uh, also. So on my palette, this is, uh, this is Holbein's Artist Watercolor, Watercolors. And uh, <clears throat> my paintbrushes, I've got a couple of varieties here. Most of them, these are Holbein, these are Holbein Synthetic. I've got uh, the number number 16 round, which is one of my favorite round brushes. Uh, this one here is a number eight, a number eight round. And then I've got uh, another Holbein Rigger number four rigger. So those are all Holbein brushes right there. Then over here I've got a couple, uh, this was a, this is a quill, I'll use that a little bit, and I'll probably, I might use this Escoda, which is a number 10, for maybe some brush strokes here and there. So I'm going to be using brown, uh, round brushes today. Round brushes. Uh, I think they make a better mark for flowers and so forth. I'll probably use a flat to mix up some of the paints, but I'm going to use the round brushes for painting. So I'm going to show you a couple of brush strokes here that uh, I've been playing around with. Uh, the two brushes I'm going to use mainly in the, in, is going to be this number eight round. And uh, what I do is I, I, I wet the brush in, in, the, in the water bucket. And what I do is I, I shake out the excess water. Because I, I just want a damp brush. I don't, want a, I don't want a wet, real wet brush. And then I'm going to go in and uh, let's, pick out, let's pick out some of this uh, yellow lemon. Or, yeah. This is uh, yellow orange, and when I load it, I load the brush about uh, halfway up, using it half of the brush. If I turn it this way, you see I'm using it. I'm loading it. I don't get the whole, don't use the whole brush. Just I load it from the side, but I only load it about halfway. And the consistency there, I don't want it too, I don't want it too wet. I don't want it too uh, too dry, but I do want it wet enough so it runs a little bit, or, or so the water color moves. But I don't want it too watery on my painting. Now the brush stroke I'm going to use, uh, the brush, the round brush is designed for a special, for a specific kind of uh, stroke. Now if you use the tip of the brush first, I'm going to hold it at a 45 degree angle, 45 degree angle to the paper, and uh, 
just hold it like a pencil with my in my two uh, my thumb with my and forefinger, and I go I put my I lean I lean my uh, little pinky down on the paper so I have contact with the paper, and that gives me control over where I'm going and and keeps it straight. And I lay what I'm going to do if I lay, if I put the brush down lightly, and just press just lightly press and then drag it, I'm going to get a nice thin line. Okay, I'm going to get a nice thin line. Now if I if I do it again, and I press let me load up the brush again make sure I got paint in there. If I go if I go to the same line and I uh, press a little harder and drag, you can see I got a much wider stroke. So depending on how much pressure I put on the brush is, is how big the stroke is going to be. Now the other thing I the other thing I've practiced here is also uh, the direction of the stroke. The direction of the stroke is a uh, is the direction of the handle pointing. If my hand if my if my uh, if my brush is pointing to the to the right, and I drag it to the right. That's that's the direction of the stroke. The direction of the stroke is in the direction of the of the handle. So let's say uh, uh, I'm going to do a flower. Let's put it this. If I put the stroke down, let's say I do a uh, like a daisy leaf. If I put it down and I drag it and pull it up abruptly, pick it up, then I put it down again, load out the brush, and I put it down again in another direction. Lay it down and drag it in this direction. You can see I'm beginning to make the shape. And put it down again and drag it in. You can see you can see the the petals now that I'm forming on the flower right there, okay? Just by laying the brush down and pulling it this way. Now if I go the other way, if I do a backward stroke, let's say uh, again, I'm going to go in the direction of the handle. So if I got it pointed this way, I'm going to go this way. This way up. So I laid I laid a brush down. And uh, let's say I'm working on the same flower. So this, from this direction, I go in, and uh, I'm going I'm to show you another brush stroke. If I put it down, and then drag it, and then bring it up, you can see there, I get a little flare. When I drag it out, you see it, it starts to be dark here at the bottom, and as I let, let up the pressure, let me try that again. Let me show you that one more time. I, I, put, I load it like this. I load the brush up with paint, and then I press it into the paper, about halfway, then I drag it. I drag it up upward in the direction of the handle, but then I pull it, and then I gradually pick it up off the paper, lower the pressure. And you can see there. Now I get a brush stroke that's got a dark, a dark bottom, and then a light, a light part of the top. So that's another way of, of doing the brush work. I go this way, or I go this way. It gives me a different mark. It gives me a different mark. Okay, now another uh, the other brush I'm going to use a lot is this number number sixteen round, and uh, I'll wet that up. And now let me mix up a little bit of uh, yellow lemon, a little bit of yellow lemon up here in my palette. So I'm going to ma be making swatches here of different colors. Uh, this is yellow lemon, and I'm going to mix that with a little bit. Now rinse it out. If I'm going to use if I'm going to change color, I got to rinse out the brush. So I go into the rinse bucket. And I'm going to pick up some uh, ultramarine blue, and I'm going to bring it down and, and go into the yellow puddle, not directly, but off to the side. And you can see I can begin to get a uh, the green mixture with it with the blue, with the blue and the yellow. Now I want to pick. Now uh, rinse out the brush again, shake it out. I'm going to pick up some more uh, lemon yellow, and pick it up. Pick up the brush, and I go in there and load that into that blue. Okay, so I get the I get the color that I want, but that's a, that's a little bit wet. So I gotta again I'm gonna watch the amount of water in my brush. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up some more of that uh, ultramarine blue. So I'm I'm really I'm mixing I'm mixing a, a green from the blue and the yellow, but I'm watching how much moisture is in the brush. And go back and I'll put that in there again. Okay. No, and, that, and that's the, that's really the color I want, that green. So I'll go in here now. Now, now a leaf, a leaf stroke. And this is a bigger brush now. A leaf stroke. I'm going to try a leaf. Uh, this here I was talking about petals up here, but down here I'm talking about uh, painting leaves. So I go in. I put the brush down on the paper, press it down, and I, then I drag the brush stroke out and let go. Okay, that's a leaf. And if I want to put it, I don't go back into that puddle. I may go. I may go in and I want to address the edge. Give a little, give it a little shape to it, and I've got a leaf shape. 
let's try that one more time. I'll do one more. I'll pick up a little more of that same color. Maybe a little more blue this time. And I'll drag it, I'll drag it off this way. Put it down on paper and then go out and I'll shape this leaf and load the brush and I'll go on the other side. I might want to leave a little a little a white in the middle. Okay, there's another leaf. Okay. So by dragging the brush and then moving along the side and then lift when I lift it up, I get a I get a pointed edge. A point I start with a point and I can finish with a point, which will look like a leaf. Okay. Now I can go in there like this and just lay it down and kind of twist the brush and get a leaf stroke. So I get all kinds of shapes just by moving the brush around, just by using a round brush. All right, I want to show those ahead of time because those are some things that I've, I learned by practicing the brush stroke. Uh, I want to show you up close now. Uh, those are some strokes, strokes I did. I did this was the, uh, the using the lemon yellow and pulling it into this. I went from the center out. No, I started I started at the point and moved it into the center. So that gives me that shape there. Uh, on on the leaves, I started uh, out there. I did the I did the leaf with the larger brush. And here I'm gonna I'm gonna do some negative painting around the yellow or white flowers. I do some negative painting over here. Okay. And here's another whole a whole sheet that I did of different brush strokes. Okay. This is a this is a thinner stroke brush stroke. Here's a here's a leaf uh, a combination with a stem. Here I left a little bit of white paper showing to show like maybe a, a, a vein or something in the leaf. I did several of them down here. So you can see just by dragging the brush a certain direction and by lifting the brush up and uh, off of this off the paper at a certain time, you get the proper shape. But you don't want to you don't want to get on there and overwork the uh, brushwork uh, on the paper. We had uh, have a Facebook user that said that she uh, came, or the artist that came in a little late, and uh, want to welcome you and also remind you, of course, there's always a replay. So yeah, yeah. If you miss something out, uh, welcome aboard. If, if you miss, if you if you miss something out at the beginning, uh, the replay you can always look it over, and uh, it, it'll be on YouTube and uh, on Facebook to uh, to look at it again. Okay, I'm going to get started on the painting now. I'm going to start with, uh, let me rinse out these brushes. Because I've put, them, I've put up a little bit of paint. I'm going to start off with a different color. So I'm going to rinse out the uh, small, this is my number 8 round. And uh, also wash out the uh, 15, number, number, number 16 round. Yeah, keep them all nice and ready, ready to go. So they're, they're ready. Okay, I'm going to mix up a, a puddle down here of uh, lemon yellow. This is a... Uh, permanent yellow lemon and I'm going to use the number eight round and I'm going to start out uh, I'm going to start with the yellow colors or not <clears throat> uh, I, I'm not going to follow a photograph I'm just going to go ahead and paint what I see here and paint what, the way I'm going to paint it so I'm going to start out here with uh, uh, the yellow up in this section here I'm going to start here and I'm, and I'm going to drag the brush from the outside in toward the center, taking the edge of the brush, move it into. So I'm going to have these. These are like these will be like little dandelions or little, uh, not dandelion, little little. Uh, I guess the little daisies. Give them a little sharp edge. Okay, and I'm going to continue over here, and I'm going to now when when you do flowers, but I'm not going to worry about specific shapes because they're. They're, they're facing different ways, so and they also run into each other. You're going to have them overlapping. So these, these two uh, flowers here are going to be overlapping each other. Uh, so for the first layer is just to get the color down. Just to get the color down, okay? All right. Now, uh, to see that up close, if you want to see, that's what I've done. Just the two, uh, I've got two yellow, two yellow flowers there. And I'm going to go ahead and pick up another brush, and I'm going to... Again, I'm going to keep some brushes separate here, and I'm going to use this Escato brush, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow lemon, uh, excuse me, a yellow green, a yellow orange. No, I don't think I want it that dark. I think I'll, I'll use the uh, yellow deep. I have a yellow deep uh, color here, and I'm going to go in, I'm going to put that, and I'm, while it's still wet, I'm going to put this in the center, and what I do, I get a little wet on wet, and that's fine. Uh, that means the, the, the paint will mix. So I'm going to put the center of these two flowers here, uh, 
wet on wet. And just go ahead and let, let, the, let the watercolor do its thing. Uh, okay, I'm going to put in a couple more uh, yellow ones. Let's see. Uh, got those two. And kind of looking around here to see which way I want to go on this one. Let's see. I think what I'll do is uh, put another yellow. I'll put another yellow. Now I'm going to bunch them all together. I'm going to spread them out. So I'm going to put another one over here on this side. So I start out, I start out the edge of the flower and bring it. I use that brush stroke I showed in the very beginning. Well, I'm going to start out, loaded brush, start out, start out the end of the flower and bring it into the center. This will be, a, it'll be another little daisy out here on the side. Start out and bring it into the center. Bring it out, bring it into the center. It gives me that sharp edge. Okay, now um, this one here. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, different, I'm going to put a different color in the center. I'm going to use a little bit of that uh, yellow orange. So I'm going to be using several brushes today because I don't want to mix the colors up. Uh, you don't use the same brush for the same, different colors. Put a little bit of orange on that and make it a little darker. Okay. And I may even put a little bit of red in there. Just, I really want the, uh, want this flower out here to be a little bit different. So I'm going to put a little bit of red into the, into the mix here. Okay. And let that dry by itself. Okay, now I think what I'm going to do, I am going to paint some red ones, so um, I'm going to go back to the other brush. I'm going to rinse it out, rinse the yellow out. Okay, so now I'm going to use, uh, now what I do is I rinse out the brush, then I shake out the excess water. I shake out the excess water. And what I also do, uh, sh you shake it out or you can touch a tissue. And just take out the excess. All I want is a damp brush. You don't want to. You don't want a soppy wet brush. Just a damp brush. And I'm going to pick up some of the pyro red. I'm going to make a little puddle here. It's a nice rich red. That's a that's a really a primary red in my palette. That's pyro red. And I'm going to go ahead and put that in. I'm going to put that in. Uh, I'll let that one dry. I'm going to start up here on this side. Again, I use that same brush stroke. I'm going to start on the outside edge and bring it in. Now this is some other. This is some. Other, I'm not. This is some other kind of color of, of, of a flower. I'm not gonna. We're not gonna identify these as regular flowers. This is not a, botani a botanical study. This is just. This is just to get some colors and so forth down. I, and I'm gonna leave the center here, uh, white. So it's gonna be a red. Gonna be a red color. And I can bring that down. I'm gonna use it. Okay. Now this flower here, I'm going to leave white. So I'm going. To, what I'm doing is I'm painting negative painting here around this flower here. So this flower here is behind. So I'm painting behind to give it a uh, shape. And so this flower right here is white. I'm going to leave it. I'm just painting negative negative painting around that. Okay. Now let's go ahead and put some more. I got some more red flowers I want to put in over here. Uh, now I I don't want now to 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 avoid these two colors running together already. I I want them to. To dry a little bit, that uh, yellow. So I'm going to bring this red up into here next to this yellow flower, but I'm going to leave a little white border there until I until it dries more because I don't want them to mix yet. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the mixing, but I don't want them to run together too soon. And here's another negative painting over here. I got this white. I got another white flower up here, which I'm going to put in this side. Okay. So I'm kind of I'm kind of establishing some colors here. Uh, I'm gonna make another red one over here, and this is not gonna be as dark. So I'm gonna what I did to make your paint make your color lighter. I'm gonna I add now I'm gonna add a little bit of water to this puddle. And what that does is that that lightens the color up with a, a lighter value. So this yellow this red now is a, is gonna be a, a pinkish a pinkish red. And I'm gonna put that over here on this side, so I can put that in there. So I can change the color there just by adding a little water to that, uh, to that mix, and a little more down here on this side, and that, it does. I don't mind if they run together a little bit. It doesn't. It doesn't matter because flowers are going to be grouped together in certain, certain combinations. Okay, now I want to go back and put in some uh, centers again. Okay, 
Okay, so I'm, I might have to put the blow dryer on some of this when I get started here. So I want to go here with. Uh, I'm gonna pick up that. Okay, I'm gonna put another center. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a center. This white flower here. I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow in that. Okay, and that's a little bit wet. So I'm gonna go back and pick up a drier, drier paint, and I'm gonna go back in and put in uh, some yellow here. So these are a lot. I'm gonna leave a lot of white flowers in here. So I'm gonna be doing a lot of negative painting here eventually. And let's see these down here. I'm gonna have uh, leave that alone. This is gonna be. Here's a, here's a yellow one put down here, yellow, and uh, we'll put a little bit of orange into this one. Change that one. So I got some white flowers here. Uh, let's see, I even got green. Uh, that's it there, yellow, yellow, yellow. Yeah, okay. And then uh, uh, this one here, I'm going to mix. I've got the green on my palette, and I'll go ahead and use that. i got green mixed up on my palette. I'm going to take this green, and I'm going to put a little bit of green in this in the center of this one just just to have a difference and I'll pick up a little bit of the red uh, I think I'll put a little bit of orange in there and that one okay pretty well got the flowers covered now okay I got a lot of white flowers in there so I'm gonna do some negative painting now okay so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mix up some greens I've got the uh, uh, Let's see. I think I'll blow dry this while it's still wet and, and get that so I get the greens in there. So I'm going to put the blow dryer on. So what I've done is I've really mixed up some yellows and, and oranges and reds right now. And so now I'm going to paint and a lot of these, there's a lot of white flowers here you'll see soon. And uh, so I'm going to be doing a lot, I'm going to be doing some negative painting with the green leaves, which will make those, which will make those stand out. I'm blow drying uh, the extra, uh, extra moisture off the, off the flowers. Okay, all right, That's, uh, that dries it enough. Right now, let me get the. Uh, now I've got some mixtures here of green, and uh, I'll start with a lighter green. I'll start with. A, I got the yellow. Lemon mixed in with the ultramarine blue, and that's what I want. And I can just add, if I, if I want it lighter, I add more yellow to it. And if I want it darker, I add more blue to it. So I got a nice, I got a little mix over here going. So on this, uh, is, I'll paint this leaf over here. I start with the, I start with the tip, and I bring the edge around, and, and there's the leaf. Okay. Uh, and down here, I might pick up a little darker mix over here in the corner. So I'll pick up some more blue. Get a darker mix here and I'll bring down here. I'll start with a tip, go around to the side, and go back here and get the other side. Okay. So now these uh, these flowers here in the middle now, I'm gonna put a kind of a combination of different lights and darks. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be uh, going back and forth on the palette and picking up lighter color. And darker colors just to make a variety of, of greens. Uh, as you know, uh, in a bunch of flowers, a lot of leaves and so forth, uh, and so they can be lots of different colors. I'm going to use lots of greens to break up the colors here. Uh, I'm going to paint, this is negative painting. I'm going around these white flowers now to uh, get their shape. And I'm, I'm varying the uh, the color, picking up a lighter green, picking up darker green. So I go around and do a little bit of uh, variety here. Uh, that's still a little wet there, so I got to stay. I, there's a little bit, of, still a little bit of moisture in that yellow flower, so I leave that one alone for a little while. I'll, I got plenty here to work on. Uh, I'll go down here at the bottom. There's a, there's a couple flowers here I want to pick out as uh, individuals. And <clears throat> uh, change the color. I'm, I'm, I'm constantly going back to the palette. I'm changing the color of greens. I'm going and getting lighter greens, darker greens. Uh, just to give me a variety of, of greens 
in the leaves. I don't want them all to be the same. I'd be that's very boring to have the same color over and over again. So you want to vary your greens. Pick up a little darker green now. Because the, the, the lighting from wherever it's coming from is also going to change the color. It'll make it darker and lighter and so forth. So we account for that. Now I got some uh, bigger leaves over here. I'm gonna pick up some lighter. I might I might have the light coming from up here, so these might be lighter, uh, lighter value of greens out here. Uh, so I'm gonna give a little. I'm really not worrying about the composition as far as uh, lighting goes, uh, and I'm not worried about uh, center of interest. Uh, I'm just having fun with the colors and the shapes and so forth. Uh, and these, uh, I'm just kind of very variety, a variety of shapes. And the light be coming from this side be a little lighter. And uh, while it's still wet, I could still I could go in and add some even yellow on top of this to kind of let it mix on its own, which I'll, I may do here in a minute. Uh, to get another variety. So the, the colors are really up to the artist, uh, and by observing uh, different uh, subjects like flowers, you can come up with all kinds of ideas uh, by looking at photographs. And uh, let's see, I think I'll leave that. Uh, that now I leave that one blue, I guess. I'll get one more. I get one more up here. I got another. I got a big one up here. I can work on. There's a, a leaf way up here at the top. I'll put that in. Notice I start the, I know the begin, beginning and I come down one stroke and go to the other side and get the other stroke in and I make my leaf in one, actually two or three strokes. Okay, and that defines that one. Then there's a, in front of this, uh, I've got some greens around here. So really the greens are going, the greens really have the role of uh, shaping the flower because I'm, I'm really doing negative painting around the edges here to get the shapes of the flower. These white flowers uh, are being set off by this darker color green. So the, the, uh, the flower edge will be defined by the, uh, the green leaves. And there's such a variety of greens out here. It's just amazing. There's light greens, dark greens, there's uh, brown greens. This one over here. Um, maybe a little more in there. A little more green in there. And that one, I, still, I gotta dry that one out because it's it really, really has a, let's see. I think I'll go back to my color brush let's see I want to put a little more orange up in there so I'll pick up a little more orange put a little dot put a little dot of orange in there like that maybe some more up here on this add a little more orange to these yellows give a little more color okay now what I think I'll do is I'll pick up, I've got a couple of special colors here that I want to try. Let's try, uh, let's try the cerulean blue. A little cerulean blue. And I'm going to put that in here. A little, this is like a blue, some kind of blue flower coming in. Or a blue blossom or something. It could even be a leaf. And this one up here, um. Uh, And what I'm going to do on this one, maybe I can uh, do a little special technique here that uh, I load the brush and I'm going to kind of flick it on the paper and uh, get some dots there. What I have to do, let me see, let me try this other brush. I'm going to experiment with this brush here too. Uh, this, is, this is experimentation. You get in there and you can pick up a color 
a little bit of uh, cerulean blue, maybe a touch of uh, ultramarine blue. And you load the brush. Yeah, you get a pretty, and then you go in there and you do kind of a a drop, drop some drops on there. Get a little splash going. Give a little variety into the technique here. And then, because uh, some of that will be covered up by the background, so it's not a big, not a big iffy thing. And you can also pick up some of those drops. We'll get some blues in here, uh, just to give a little bit of ch color change. Okay, now while I got the blue in the brush, I'm also going to put down some blue. Put some blue here, and, and the, there's a va the vase. I'm going to put a little bit of blue down here. The white wipe out the brush a little bit. I'm going to put a little blue down here in the vase, the vase. So I'll start with the darker value over here on this side as I come over toward the right side. It's going to be I'm going to leave it white because it's it could be the sunlight coming through. All right, there we go. Now, uh, this little this little teacup over here, I'm going to use a little bit of the. I'm going to use my other color. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, cornacanum violet, beautiful color, just to add some more. Again, some color, a little more interest to the the painting. And let's see, don't want to isolate that too far. I might put a little bit over here on this side. Put a little quinacridone over here. Okay. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the yellow ochre. I got some yellow ochre down here, so I haven't used that yet. So I'm going to pick up some yellow ochre and I'm going to put that down here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put that on a tabletop. So the yellow ochre down here at the tabletop, uh, that'll be like a wood, wooden top or color, whatever it is. And let, I'm letting the colors run. It's always good to have uh, a combination where you, uh, you don't have uh, one color start, another color stop. It's just kind of a combination because the the colors are being reflected around the painting. And here I've got a little bit of blue mixing in with that yellow ochre, which will give it a gray grayish look. I'm gonna put that top on here. Can you scoot that up just a little bit so they can see the bottom? Yeah. Yes, I will. I'll pick it up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I kept that out of view. I just put some yellow ochre down here at the bottom on the tabletop uh, just to give it a little bit of color change. And I'm going to pick up a, a little bit of that blue we had, a little bit of that blue up there. I'm going to bring it down here. So this will be like the, if there's a, uh, a cover or tablecloth or something hanging down. And I'm going to put a little bit more of that blue over here on this uh, picture. Could be a pitcher or maybe it's a pot. Put a little blue over here. So I got blue, I got, I got blue in the painting, and so I want to mix it up a little bit. Okay. And add a little bit of water to that to kind of spread it out. Uh, it, it leaves leaves some white showing, it's fine. Could be the glare from the sun or reflection or whatever. And then down here I can put the uh, a little blue. I'll use some ultramarine blue here at the bottom. Put a little ultramarine blue here at the bottom for a shadow at the bottom of this little saucer or whatever. Maybe a little bit over here. I can put some along the edge. Put a little color on this. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of color behind here. Shape the handle. And I can put a little bit of color here on this saucer. Just a little bit. So I'm just going to paint, uh, you know, paint part. You just cut, make a suggestion of what it is, and let let the viewer, f you know, figure it out a little bit. Uh, take some of that uh, yellow uh, yellow ochre, rinse out the brush, 
if you're going to change colors, you got uh, if you're going to change colors, you got to rinse out the brush, or else it's going to get dirty. And mix, mixtures are going to come all over the place. So I'm going to put a little bit of yellow ochre up here in with this in with this teacup. We're not going to define that too well. Just going to let the let the viewer figure it out. And uh, over here, oh, and I've got uh, I've got a little I've got a little uh, pepper over here. So I'm going to start with uh, I'm going to start with orange at the bottom. So I'm going to treat this a little bit different. I'm going to start with orange at the bottom. So put a little fruit on the table. And then I'm going to pick up, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick up a little bit of red. So it's going to be a mixture. It's going to be a red. It's got some red mixed in with that orange. Red apple, red, uh, red peppers. With a little flavor of orange on there when they mix together it'll look beautiful and i'm going to leave a little bit of white showing as a more of a, a it could be a little reflection on the outside of the pepper and let that let it kind of run now let that paint run together don't don't worry about it let that let that run together and i kind of shape the outside edge a little bit make it round nice and round on the edges okay and I'll put the stalk on when it dries. I'll put the stalk on there. Okay, let me let me check my flowers. Let's see. I might want to put some more greens up in here. So I'm gonna uh, I might as well stay with the same brush. Uh, put a little more greens in here, and I gotta put some more greens in here. Separate that, and uh, I gotta get some more reds in here. Okay, no reds. red flowers in here next to this yellow okay doo, 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 doo. now what I'll do now with the uh, with the stems what I can do is take some of this green I don't have to have any special colors just take the just take the blue and the yellow and make a make a dark green and I can start putting it in some indications of stems on the flower, just put them in there, and these little blank spots I have, they can be they can be filled in with with uh, stems. And one out here, this is this is a stem on this one on this day. Put a little green, put a little greenery on the stems there. Okay, and let's see. I could put a little more green. I could, this is missing a little section out here. This could be a little a little leaf hanging off the side here. Stick that on. And uh, I'm just checking some of the edges here now. Uh, let's see what I want to do now up here. I can make that into a, a green relief. Add some green on top of that. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. So I got lots of I got lots of white flowers. I got them pretty well defined. There's one section here I can do. Uh, this section here just needs a little help right here. So I'm trying to I'm trying to uh, cover uh, the main areas because uh, some some uh, some flowers they don't have to be well they don't have to be perfectly defined, but just enough indication that uh, you know that shape is is there. Because they're all going to run together in different colors, especially in a, a big vase, flowers like this, you're not going to be able to distinguish one flower from another. They're going to just show up that way. I got that green. This is green here. Uh, yeah, this should have been. I'll probably make this into a green next to this flower. It should be a little bit better. So I'm, I'm, over, I'm painting over top of this section here, just to give it a more, def, more defined. Uh, so I'm going to turn it into a leaf combination, and the green mixed in with a little bit of uh, orange will turn it into a brown, a brownish. But it'll, have, it'll show green. It'll read as green, just a different color green. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm going to let me dry it now. I need to dry off again because it's just awful wet. And then we're going to put in. I'm going to put in a simple background, but I'll show you how I do that. I 
Is that? I already did. Down here. <laughs> I did. I will. I'll show some more. I gotta turn on the turn up a little bit higher, get it going here. Let's see. If if it's slow, if it's too slow to dry, I pick up a tissue. There's some extra moisture here, so I'll go take a tissue and just pick up the extra moisture. I'll fold the tissue and uh, dab it. I'll pick it up. Yeah, that helps. The extra moisture. I want to make sure the edges are dry before I put the background on the roof that will run into it. So I want to make sure the edges are pretty dry. These areas up here, these little drops. Okay, all right, that's, uh, that's dry enough. Now, what I'm going to do now, <laughs> this is a, this is something that's, uh, I, ha I have a lot of fun with, but anyway, I'll, I'll, you'll see what I mean when I get started here. Uh, I'm going to put these brushes aside. Now I'm going to use the, uh, use the quill brush. This is a number 50, I guess a number 35 or 40 quill. It's a natural hair. And, uh, uh, what I'm going to do with the palette now is, uh, I'm bringing some more blue. Uh, for the background, I'm going to use I'm going to use the palette color, which is whatever I have. This way, I don't waste any paint. I'm going to take the color that's here, that's in the palette, and I'm going to make I'm just going to mix it up into a a color. Let's see. I'll pick up a little more. Let's we'll make a little more orangey down at the bottom or brown. Uh, maybe a little yellow ochre up up here. Use a little more yellow ochre for the background. We may so, have lost LinkedIn, Everett, so if anyone in LinkedIn is able to see us, could you please pop in a message and let us know? Okay. Yeah, I don't know how where it went out today because I, I didn't I didn't have a good fit I didn't have a good signal coming off of one channel or two channels. So uh, LinkedIn should get it should have it. Uh, Facebook and YouTube and uh, Switch Twitch should also have it. But I can rebroad. It can be rebroadcasted after the show on YouTube. And uh, over here, I'm gonna put lots of water in this. I don't want this that dark. I want to have a light value. And uh, let's see, green. I'm gonna put a little, just a touch of uh, red in there. I want, I want to dull that down into a. There, that's it. That's what I want. I want more of a brown. Because I don't want to compete with the greens that are in there. So I'm gonna make it a different color. I'll get a little brown up here. A little brownish, but it's nice and uh, okay. Now, what I do now, I, now you, what I'm doing, I'm using all the palettes that are left in the in the puddle, and I mix them up. But I kept kind of a separate. I got a little brown here, and I got a little more yellow down here at the bottom, or a little blue. Uh, but I'll, I'll leave it. I'll leave a little bit of yellow in here, a little lighter at this bottom. But it's all going. It's all going to look the same. Not the same, but it's going to look a little different anyway. So what I'm going to start doing now is I go in and. Uh, I'm going to take this brush here. I'm going to take my number 19, 16 round, my number 16 round, and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to come into the edge of this. And even if, if, if there's even paint in this brush, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to just go around. I'm just going to start introducing color around outside of the of the painting. So this is the background, and it. Uh, it it can wind up. I make it any color I find. If it's if it's purple, I make it purple. If it's if it's blue, I make it blue. If it's green, I make it green. But this is kind of a neutral. It's like a neutral color now. It's like a, a brownish gray color. But what I'm doing is just kind of uh, breaking, uh, filling in the uh, the background a little bit. Just show you how I do a background. If I have a painting like this with lots of white space. Uh, Rather than masking it out and doing all, I don't, I don't mask that sort of, that much paper. I, I, I will mask out areas I want to save the whites in, but other than that, uh, 
it's too much work to go in and have to mask out all the little details. So it's this is the way I do a background uh, on a larger painting like this. And uh, so I start out by getting all the, uh, the major parts here done. And then I'll go in and I'll clean up the edges a little bit. And uh, you can make this any color that's in your palette. I just use the colors so I don't, <laughs> uh, you know, this way you don't waste the paint that's in your palette. You got, you got your colors in there anyway, so just mix them up and come up with whatever color you have. It'll be, uh, let's say, let's say it's, it'll be analogous to whatever's there because it's the same colors you used in your paintings. So they'll sort of blend together no matter what it is. Uh, all the greens and yellows and oranges all get, get combined into whatever the color is. And it turns out to be a pretty good, a pretty good background. When it dries, it looks even better than that. You can be surprised what you come up with. And you can make it uh, a cool background. You can add a little blue to it if you want to make it darker or bluer. Uh, you you can put uh, ye more yellow in it and make it lighter, or put more water in it and you can lighten it up. But you don't want to have it so washed out that there's no color there at all because it's going to dry. Remember, watercolor dries. 30% lighter than when it looks it looks dark now because it's wet but when it dries out it'll be much it'll be much lighter and that, and that's kind of what you have to plan for there's uh, how dark is your paint when you put it down so this mop brush uh, or it's a quill but I call it, it's really like a mop brush it's a big it holds a lot of paint and water and uh, it's a lot of fun to work with. It, it doesn't. You can't get a lot of detail with it, but you can cover a lot of paper with it. That's what I use it for. And I can overlap some of the colors here. And I'll go down behind here next to the picture, the vase. There we go. And I fill in a little spot here. Okay, now down at the bottom here, I like to change a little bit. I'm going to add, I'm going to add another color right, right out of the palette. I'm going to take a little bit of cerulean blue. I'm going to make it a little bluer at the bottom. So that I intentionally now put in another color. And what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to take that, that color. I'm going to go down here and put it down at the bottom. Make, just so the bottom of this paint is different than the top. And... It's going to be a little another color. If you splatter paper uh, paint around, it's okay. It gives a little more texture to the painting. In fact, I like to. I, I was splattered more on this, and I make let me do that before I finish. Is uh, to splatter some more. Okay, we're about ready. To, we're winding up this painting now. So this is the background, and uh, this covers it. Now, see some more splatter, but again, it doesn't. It doesn't hurt the painting. There's a little splatter coming from my brush. But that'll put a little character into the painting. I'm not going to worry about wiping that up. I'm just going to let it go. Just let it rip. Okay. Now I'm going to take this. Uh, now this brush here. Now this number 16 round. It's got a. It's got a point to it. So now I can do pick up some of this paint now, and I can go in now and uh, uh, go in between some of these petals and some of these uh, green leaves. And I'm, uh, I might leave a little white paper showing to give it just a little glow around some of the edges. I might, I might uh, glaze over some of them, at least some whites, as a highlight. I'll leave a little highlight on the uh, on the edges of some of these leaves. Picking up the excess paint, you might if you if you wet if if it, uh, another thing you'll get your pot you might get some blossoms here when you put wet over wet, but sometimes the blossoms will add a nice little design in the background. So uh, I don't worry about those. It doesn't take away from the the painting. Sometimes it adds texture, a little more interest to it. Now I'll come up here. Uh, I'm taking I'm taking. Uh, I probably would take a little more time doing this if I was doing, you know, a real final painting. But this is this is the final painting. But let's say if I was doing a a real studio painting, I would take a little more time. But I want to get what I'm trying. To, I'm demonstrating here what I would do uh, to cover some of these areas. 
Now this also, this see this background is also uh, defining those flower edges. So th this here is also uh, defining the edge edge around the uh, leaves, but it's also defining uh, edge around those white flowers. This is what it does. So those white flowers are being more defined now with this background in here. Okay, and I think I'll come down inside there. Uh, come around almost uh, coming around the end of the boat here uh, and I can overlap overlap some of the colors that doesn't that doesn't hurt it overlapping gives a, a little bit of uh, interest going in behind going in behind okay a little bit in behind there and I see some I see some spots here so what I'll do is just kind of uh, break this up out here. I don't want to have a hard edge. I don't want to have a hard edge. Yeah, I don't mind to have the. I don't mind having a little uh, blossom out there, but I don't want hard edges around the edges of the subject matter. So I'm going back in now, just kind of putting some more brush strokes out here on the corners, on the outside, kind of blending it out a little bit. Okay, and let's see. Let's give it. Let's give it a dry. Yeah. We're going to add, put the blower back on. So I mixed up, I mixed up a puddle, uh, I mixed up the, the palette with the, the paint there, but it put it into a puddle. And, uh, and I use that as the uh, background color. And uh, it can turn out to be any kind of color you have left over. So you have a, a warm, a warm, this is kind of a warm background. Because I have a lot of blues here in the painting, so it kind of sets off the blue, the cooler color. Blues and greens against the warm background. Okay. Okay. Now, what I think I'll do now? I'll do I want to just go in with my uh, rigger brush, uh, and I'm just going to just going to do some little. Just a little fine tuning, and uh, I can pick up a little bit of that uh, ultramarine blue. Put a little more darks in there. So it's just fine, kind of fine, fine tuning a little bit of the uh, shapes here that got a little bit wet uh, from the blending. And let's see. Uh, the last step I have is what I normally do now is I'll go in and I'll put a little shade. I'll take a little bit of uh, Payne's gray, a little bit of Payne's gray, which is a, a, a new. It's not neutral. It's black, but it's, you can water it down to a, a soft gray by adding a little bit of water to it. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a little bit of shading here on some of these flowers so that they break them apart. Because there is some separation, so I'm going to put this a little bit of shading here on this one, uh, maybe on this one. Uh, these two here together, so I'll kind of separate the two the flowers that are closer together, make, make one a little more prominent. Especially this one right here, these two here together, I'm going to break that up with a little bit of shading. And this yellow flower here, I can add a little bit of shading in there. So that kind of breaks up. That kind of breaks up those flowers, so they don't sit. You know, they're kind of broken apart now with a little bit of shading behind. Just, just a touch. Okay. And you don't want now. There's, there's a certain point here. You don't. You don't want to get carried away. I think you have to look. Step back and take a look at it. And. Hmm. hmm, hmm. Oh. Okay. I left. I left one thing out of here. I left the. Uh, the green stem on the. And the pepper. So we'll take a little bit of blue, add a little bit of yellow to that. A little darker blue. Okay, that's dark. A little dark blue with yellow gives me a green, and I'll add the stem here to this pepper. Okay. Okay, let's put a matte board around this. Let's put a matte board around it. 
See if we can dress it up a little bit. So I'm gonna come over here. I got another one I'll show you too. I worked on this a little earlier. But let's take a look at this one. Once you put a mat board around it, it helps it helps bring out some of the some of the shapes. Okay. Now the uh, because I have this at a uh, it's a portrait format. Uh, I'm gonna have to bring it up a little bit. You won't be able to see the whole framing of it, but you can see at least you can see the parts that. Uh, okay. So, there's a lot of white. I added, from the photograph I showed in the very beginning, I added a lot of white colors because I wanted more white and, and dark in here, less light and darks. And uh, then I put the colors of uh, orange and yellow, and, and the red kind of brought out some of it. And then I added in the greens here to give me a con nice contrast with the lighter colors. And I added in the, the little uh, the, the cup and the pepper and a little bowl over here, a pitcher on the side. And, uh, and then at the end, I did a background out of all the mixtures in the palette mixing it up and then did a background. So that's the results I have. I, I think it turned out pretty good. I call that a vase of flowers. Now I did one earlier for just a little practice. Let me show you that one. It, uh, it might be interesting also. It's very similar to this, but I, it's a little bit smaller. But let me, let me show that. Bring this over here. And uh, uh, That was a quarter sheet. This is a, this is a nine by 12. So you'll be able to see the whole thing, okay. And I'll put a I'll put a mat board around that. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll address this. Got a little bit of brown border on it. Okay. There you go. All right. So that's now here is I, I took a little more time on this. You can see the, the colors are a little bit brighter, and uh, of course it's a little bit smaller, so a little more concentrated. But uh, again, it turned out to be another vase of flowers, which uh, I really enjoy doing. I'm gonna be doing more flowers in the future. I really this is one thing I I, been, I do a lot of landscapes. I do a lot of other things, but. I want to get into uh, drawing more, doing more flowers and maybe fruits and things like that. So uh, that's probably some of my forward looking subject matter I'll be looking at for, forward to in the future. Okay, let's take my, uh, let's go back to my main camera. Get this out of the way. I've got to move some things around. Okay. All right, back to the main camera. Hey. <laughs> All right, that was a lot of fun. I I, I do enjoy painting flowers. Uh, again, the, the the I guess the best part about it is you don't have to be that really that careful about getting it exactly. You just get a feeling and get get an impression of that flower or that shape. And I think that's an impressionistic type painting, which I like to do anyway. But the colors is what's, what gets me uh, excited is that using the change of different colors and getting the value. Color and value are the two things that I really enjoy the most. Uh, and, and of course, some of the shapes. Uh, I really enjoyed that today. I hope you did. Uh, I'm going to be on tonight at 7.30 with Simply Drawing with Everett at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then uh, I'm going to put out a uh, another uh, one line only drawing. Anyone can draw with one line, and that'll come out on Sunday. I'll put that out as a video uh, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So I'll be back live next week at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Everett's Watercolors. So uh, we'll see you then, and uh, wish you all a, uh, well, today's the early part of February, so uh, another month ahead of us. This is a short month, so <laughs> enjoy. Uh, the weather should be getting warmer in the next month or so, so you all stand in there, and uh, be safe, and take care. So, bye.